Okay, I'm back, guys. You're getting actually a sneak peek at something I was working on last night that is in progress. Um, not what we're going to be doing today, but I just thought I'd leave it here so you guys could see. I've got something in the works here. Um, you know, craft therapy is so important to me. It's such a great way for me to relax and rejuvenate and just unwind from the day. So um, I've been busy. I created this on Wednesday night. Um, that is a demo coming up for you, um, a recorded demo that I'll be posting and was working on that other one last night. So just like you, <laughs> I love my my crafting and creating as a way to just relax and recharge and refuel. Um, for those of you in the Craft Therapy Club, my paid membership group, um, this these are the paint sticks that I'm using. They're one gallon paint sticks for our background for that project. Um, we're meeting next week um, for Girls Night In to do the full project, which if you want to see it, um, this is one version of it um, this month. This is the really fun, I have a sassy and a classy. I'm calling them sassy and classy owl. That is the sassy owl. Let me see if I can find my classy girl. Um, she's just in another media book. We're creating these this month in the Craft Therapy Club. <laughs> so sweet, right? They're just so sweet. Anyway, um, some of the girls, I did one of my samples here in um, my mixed media pad and then the other one on a paint stick background. And so some of the members of the craft therapy club are interested in doing the paint stick background. So let me just demo how you put this together. It's really actually quite easy. Um, you're going to need more than one package. So these come in a pack of 10 you're gonna need 13 sticks, okay? So buy two packs. Um, I get them off Amazon and I buy them in bulk, like a thousand at a time. Um, but you, what I understand is you can get them from um, Lowe's and, and, and Home Depot. I don't have those stores anywhere near me in rural North Dakota. They're 90 miles away, so I don't shop at those stores. I have to do everything online. Um, but that's where you can go is what I understand. Okay, so the sticks have some of them. I guess it depends on what brand you get. They have these numbers on them. And let me just check. I want to make sure this camera angle is appropriate for you to be able to see. Yep, you can see that. Okay, so they have these numbers on them. And we're going to glue where the numbers are so that when we flip it over, we're painting on the solid side. We're painting without the numbers in the way. You can do it whatever way you want. Um, basically, what we want to do is create a square. So we're going to put down 11 of these sticks, okay? And I alternate. They have this little indent, which is for your fingers to hold so you can stir the paint. And we're going to alternate them um, so that, you know, indent on this side indent over here, indent on this side, indent over here. And you're just gonna go back and forth and just make sure that your numbers are all the way, um, or all facing up, I guess is what, what we wanna do. Okay, so now that we have them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I'm missing one. Here are my extra three, here's 13. I use my sticks to just straighten everything out, make sure I have straight edges. So you're gonna need your hot glue gun ready to go. Straighten out your sticks, make sure that they're all stuck together and that you have straight edges. And then we're gonna use these two sticks to glue these down. Um, you can, let me grab my other one and show you what I did. When I, for the Sassy Owl um, background, I glued on the outside of these ridges. I wanted to be able to have access to them from the back so that, you know, you can see the paint oozes through a little bit when you're working on it, which is totally fine. But if you want to have access to these to clean anything up, I just figured I would glue these down on the outside of those indents. So... Again, I would say, you do you. You do how you feel like you want to. Um, we just gotta glue them down. That is it, it's as easy as that and our background will be done. So, glue stick in hand. I'm gonna need another stick, so let's get that close by and handy. Um, I like them to match, so I'm going to flip it so the numbers show. You do you, like whatever makes sense or whatever makes your little heart happy is what I always say. Um, in your craft room, you're the boss, so you get to decide how you want this to show. Um, so just put a liberal amount of glue. You're gonna stick it down. I try to even it, so you're gonna have a little bit of an overhang, like, I don't know, less than a quarter of an inch, whatever that fraction is, 
on both the top and bottom, but it works out okay. I'll show you on the, the one I've already done that it's it's not so much that it's troublesome. Oh, I need my new glue gun. My little glue stick, I mean. Okay, here we go. We're going to put a liberal amount of glue. Let me get that back on its charging port. And then, true to fashion, first of all, I'm gonna, if I have to, um, you're gonna put this down. I'm doing it on the outside, making sure that it's even. And I'm pushing together the sticks, the base with either hand, pushing them toward the middle while I'm pushing the stick down until it cools enough so that it's set. Because you saw that they flit, they um, flared out a little bit. And so you want this nice and tight. So pushing in with both hands and then pushing down on the paint stick until it cools. And then there, there you have it. You have your paint stick background for your sassy owl when it's time to create her. Okay. So um, you can see you have just a tish of an overhang on either side. I don't think of that as too troublesome. It doesn't bother me at all that that's there. Um, I suppose to, if you really want those hidden, add another paint stick. So use 14 paint sticks and put 12 on the bottom. Um, and then you'll they'll, they'll be a little short, but it will all hold together anyway, I think. So there you have it. Craft Therapy Club members, we'll still meet for Girls Night In. We'll probably do it via Zoom. I will send you the link. I will text it to all of you. And I will... Um, I will email it all to you so you have it since we can't get in touch through Facebook anymore or for now anyway, not anymore, but just for now. So um, you guys, these, you know, the girls, for Girls Night In on Craft Therapy Club members, we're going to be using these um, next week. So I think about half of you are going to be doing it on here and half of you on your um, canvases or your mixed media pads. I think these are fabulous. I have done several different projects on these kind of background and they're just fun they're really inexpensive. It's a great way to create a background if you're in need of one, especially for mixed media. Um, I just think they're awesome. Okay, here we go. Next project. I'm gonna be using a panel that I got from, <clears throat> excuse me, Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna be using, this is called, I think they're called, what did I call them? Sweet Critters. Um, <laughs> this is a napkin bundle that I have available on my website, thecomfynestwithgrace.com. Um, I put together unique bundles of napkins so that you can craft and create with them. And this um, critter set is just gorgeous. Oh, I actually really love this one too. Um, we're going to do something. I was thinking, I love, love, love this one. She has a hummingbird and then you have the swan. <clears throat> it's hard to decide which one to work with. I'm going to do the swan. That was my original feeling was to work with the swan. I'm dying to work with the pig too because I just love the little flower in her hair. They're all really quite fabulous. Anyway, this bundle is available on my on my site. You can go check that out if you want to. We are going to use this as our main subject, like our main focal point for this. And then we have to make up a little. Um, you know, this the napkin doesn't quite cover this whole canvas panel. This is from the Dollar Tree. It's an eight by eight canvas panel, but the napkin it comes in four sections. So you're going to get four different panels with the same um, design on them, which I love because then you have four different options. When you buy a bundle of napkins for me and say there's 10 napkins in the bundle, you're actually getting 40 because 10 times four, you're getting 40, usually 40 um, panels to work with, which is lots of crafting ability with that, right? Lots and lots. I only need one of these sections and I want it to be square. I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to show you. I really like, I'm going to cut it out a little bit big. And I'm only cutting, I'm only using the top layer. When you're working with napkins, it's incredibly important that you separate the layers. There's usually two or three plies, meaning layers. And all you want to work with is the top layer and the rest of it can just be used for something else, I suppose. But we just want the top layer. That's what's gonna go down. I don't like squared off edges. It's, I'm just not a fan of them. Um, but again, it's, it's not a problem. When, I, when we create, we know 
there's no right or wrong answer. Like there's no right or wrong. One isn't better than the other. It's just which do you prefer? And I don't prefer the straight edges on my projects. So I usually take a water brush or just a regular brush with water on it and I wet my edges and then I tear them so that I have a torn look, a torn edge to my project. And I'm trying to go close to the edge because I don't want to lose a lot of the color. I just don't want to have that straight edge on my project. So I'm going around and I'm going to wet the whole thing just on the edges. And then I either use a pencil eraser or some kind of silicone tool to tear. You can use your fingers. I just find it easier because the napkin doesn't stick to the silicone. Um, I just find it easier to use a tool. So I have this little squeegee that I use and I just kind of tear the napkin away and get it started. It's like stuck on my mat. So see how it just tears away and I want it to be messy and I want it to look really ragged. I don't want it square. That's the whole point of this step in the process is to get your napkin and you may, you guys, it dries so quickly, <laughs> the water on the napkin, you may end up needing to wet it again but we just want to tear. You can use your finger. Uh, you can also use, I quite often use just a big eraser off of a pencil. Um, that gives you a little more bold tear, I think, than the silicone tool that I was using. That I think that edge was rolled, so that made it really easy to pull that off. And we want them all to match. I want a really soft edge. I just don't want it to be so linear looking, so square. Here's my another rolled edge. Sometimes one works better than the other. Just use your finger, just use whatever you have on hand, whatever suits you, whatever you like. Okay, now that that's done, let's get rid of all this excess. And what we should have left is a really pretty panel to put on our project. Now, what I was saying about the, the panel, the eight by eight canvas is bigger than my napkin. So what am I gonna do with these edges? Um, I usually go with whatever, if you're using decorative paper or napkin or whatever you're using, I usually use that as my inspiration for color. And I went to my paints and I pulled out, like I think that really matches the celery green from Waverly. I don't quite have a baby blue or a light blue like that, but this seems similar to me. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna add in some white paint. Um, we're gonna use both of those to create kind of a background that will match the background on this project. Um, and then I think I'm gonna layer in some lace somehow. I don't know, I haven't quite decided. <laughs> so we're just gonna get started. I'm gonna do the background first. And then I'm going to um, decoupage the napkin on. So I just have to do, it's like an inch all the way around of this beautiful color is basically all I need. And I suppose you can do it either way. You can decoupage the napkin on first. And then maybe that's what I should do. Let's decoupage the napkin on first and then we'll paint around it with this. Um, it might be a little more seamless looking, but you could try it either way. The other day I did one and I did it just the opposite. I did the background first and then I decoupaged the napkin on. I'm looking around to see if I have that project close by and I don't. Um, <laughs> otherwise I would have shown you. But let's get this on here. Let's just start with that. I'm going to use, I think I'll use my matte gel medium. You can use any decoupage medium that you have. Um, I just happen to really like this stuff. So this is what I'm gonna use to get it on there. So we'll start with that. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of this, get it on our panel. I love working on the canvas panels. I love the nooks and crannies. I love wrinkles. I love frayed edges. I like things to look not perfect. I like them to be a little you guys know me. You know I like things wonky and imperfect and really natural and handmade. I don't, I'm not going for, for perfection for sure. It's just not me. Just not me. Okay, really liberal here with the matte gel medium. 
I'm gonna place my napkin. Now I'm going to try to stretch it, right? Meaning I'm not gonna pull and tear it, but we wanna lay the middle in first into the glue, into the matte medium, and then lay the rest of it down. And then we have to pounce it. Look at that, so pretty, just the way it is. But I usually pounce it into the glue. And I usually just use a, a brush that has a really big, wide, it's usually my oldest brush and it's something that's big and wide. Oh my gosh, I just think that torn edge is so darn pretty. And listen, I get wrinkles. I do, look at all the wrinkles, but I think they're glorious and I think they're beautiful. I love the wrinkles, I love the texture. I told you I might be adding some lace to this project. Um, so I just embrace it, you guys. I, If you really want a decoupage napkin look that's more perfect, I would suggest doing the iron method using the iron your your you know regular clothing iron or your heat press iron to press it down you'll get fewer wrinkles but i love the wrinkles you guys i just think they're so beautiful i really do okay look at that gorgeous edging on it we need to get this dry and then um i'm gonna i'm gonna wipe a little bit of this i can see i have excess matte gel medium so i'm gonna wipe the excess off the edges and then I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer. Excuse the noise. Here is where I used my eraser on my pencil and so you see how their really bold chunks were taken out as opposed to this really soft edge that was taken out with the big um, the bigger squeegee that I used so I used the squeegee on all of this and then I pulled the pencil to show you and see how it tore it it's just a little more bold again there's one isn't better than the other they're just different you guys they're just different i don't love the look of these bold chunks that are hanging out here like this and this but it's okay we can we're going to be painting around this anyway so i guess we could just leave it okay now you want this to be dry let's hit it again And normally I would um, probably go in with a little bit of clear gesso just to prep. Um, you don't want your paints or whatever color you're using, whether it's a watercolor or a pencil or a pastel, you don't want that to um, have any trouble adhering to your board. And sometimes it just depends on the medium you use, your glue. It depends on the decoupage medium or glue that you use. Sometimes those can cause your paints to not stick or blend as well. So it's a really good idea to come back with some clear gesso and just coat the whole thing. Um, but I'm, I'm tempted to skip this. I'm being lazy. <laughs> it's actually a matter of timing. I just, I don't wanna keep you guys here forever. And it's a timing thing. I don't know. Let's hit it with a little clear gesso just to be sure that it all um, is prepped and ready to accept the paints that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use acrylic paints. Those are <laughs> the reason is because those are the paints of the colors that I have that match the background of this napkin. But I want this board to be able to accept those acrylic paints. And so it's a good idea to come in with some clear gesso and just hit your board with that to make sure that the matte gel medium, the glue that I used for the napkin, isn't going to resist my paints. It's just a safety. I was going to skip it, you guys, but it really doesn't take that long. So I hit all the edges really well, and I'm just going to touch on the napkin itself. I don't plan on doing any painting on the napkin itself but just to be sure, let's just put a light coat of clear gesso all over the whole napkin. If I wanted to come in and shade or add like a sparkle, which I'm known to do, a glitter paint onto, maybe I'll do that onto the swan on her, her the, the swan herself. Um, so if I wanted to do that, you wanna make sure that it's all ready to accept paints or gels or gouaches or whatever you're using. <laughs> Watercolor, pencils, markers, you want all of it to stick and the clear gesso will help them. Okay, air dry time. I 
had my tin foil ready, but I actually, I did actually clean this stinker pretty well. So I'm going to use this. <laughs> Imagine that. I got it all cleaned up. Okay. We are just going to grab, I'm going to grab a couple of different paint brushes and I'm going to grab my colors. So I grabbed this blue. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on here because I don't quite know. I grabbed this green, which is from Cell um, Waverly. It's called Celery. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. And it went on my lid, lovely. I'm gonna grab some of that. I'm gonna end up blending these and I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I'll probably use it with both the green and the blue. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white. I have some green on here already. So I'm gonna pick a little bit of the green and the white up and I'm gonna just start, see there's more green over here and more blue over there. So I'm gonna just start smushing this on and see if I can get the colors to like work together. Okay, so I'm kind of creating, I wanna create a background that makes sense. And you guys, I really think I'm gonna end up putting some lace on the edge of this. So it doesn't, I don't even need it to be perfect. I really don't, because it's going to get covered up a little bit. But I didn't want to leave it. You could leave it just plain. I actually really like it with just her in the middle with these um, edges that are all kind of ragged. I, I kind of actually like it more than I thought I would. But... Let's just play with our paints. Um, you know, like I said, <laughs> craft time, create time, creative time is so much about playing and just enjoying. I always tell you guys to enjoy the process and commit to the, the, the joy of the process rather than worrying about what your outcome is going to be. Um, I think we're all on our own creative journeys and each one of us has a different journey. Like... Your experiences are your own, um, with your both with your creating and crafting and with life. So you're going to see things, whoa, that's really bold. You're going to see things a lot differently than I would or that the next person would. And thank God for it, right? Because otherwise life would be really boring if we all saw things the same. So your experiences that you bring to your create creative life and to your craft table, um, they're going to be different than mine and there's no right or wrong. It's just sit down and enjoy the process and let it be what it's going to be and discover. I think I love to use the word discover and I love to encourage you guys to discover and explore. So um, you don't know until you try. I don't know how this is going to work out until I try it. I kind of have an idea in my head, but I don't know until I start trying and not everything is going to be... Um, perfect thank god because I, I don't like perfect um but even when you have an idea of your in your head of what you think you want that's what it doesn't always work out that way and sometimes it's a happy accident that you love and sometimes it's not something you love but either way i want to encourage you to just have fun with the process enjoy the process enjoy being creative get your paints out get your fingers dirty um just just create and craft every day if you can if you can't as often as you can um that's why my membership groups i have two membership groups paid membership groups and um it's wonderful for those of us who struggle with um creating on a regular basis and if that's you if you struggle to have the motivation or the ideas to create on a regular basis I encourage you to look into, if it's not my membership group, anybody's membership group. There are lots of creative, crafty, uh, artistic people who have membership groups. And it's really nice because it encourages you to just do it on a regular basis with a group of people. And the fellowship and the, the community and the learning, and it's all just so enjoyable. And we need those connections right now. It's really ironic that I've lost my connection to so many of you on Facebook, um, maybe the blessing in disguise will be that it will force us to connect on YouTube and that will bring new new people into the mix. Okay, I'm loving the blue over here. I felt like this green was just too green. So I'm grabbing some of that blue and not so much, you can see I'm not paint stroking it on. 
I'm dabbing it on, which is going to give it the same texture as some of the wrinkles that are in my napkin, or at least that was my, <laughs> that was my original goal or plan. So I'm just, while the paint is still wet, I'm pulling in some of the blue because I feel like the blue was um, matching a little better. And yes, you can see the line where um, the paint ended and the blue napkin starts, but I, I think it looks good. Like I think um, if you didn't know that I started out with a napkin, if when you see this project, you if you didn't know that, then that wouldn't be obvious to you that, oh, I can see she put a napkin in the middle and then she painted around it. The goal is to make that not so obvious, right? Now, here's where her neck should be, and I really should have some, it looks like some gray, so let me find a gray. Looking for the lightest gray that I have. You guys, I started to um, store all my paints upside down because not all of them have that dot on the top that tells you the color. Most of my bottles just have white on the top. Um, and not all of them are white. So I've started to store them all this way so that when they're in my bin, I can see them all. All right, I'm gonna go to that gray later. I'm gonna finish with the blues and the greens because my paintbrush, that's what it has on them. Whoa, that was really green. And I've run out of white. I'm using the white as my base to like water down the colors that I have on my brush and to like soften them up. It's also wetting the canvas. See, I'm base of white dabbed on there and then grab your color and move it around with it. Um, that is allowing me to blend the colors together and create that watercolor look to the color. Way too much blue in here. I'm gonna offload some of it over here because I do need a lot of blue up here. Somebody just, it must be my husband, just came home. I hear somebody moving around in my house, and um, I'm the only one home where I thought I was. He, he's running, he was running errands this morning, and oh, this thing with the Facebook, we're working with our bank to, you know, put a fraud alert on all our accounts, and yeah, that's what my poor husband has been working with today. It's really scary um, to have been hacked like that, so... Let me tell you, it has not been, it's been a little stressful. Um, so the craft, the craft therapy is a good thing, guys. It's, it's a good thing for all of us. Hacked or not hacked, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on that cause us to want to just get lost a little bit every once in a while in something pretty, right? All right, I have some of my green paint still here, so I'm going to try to blend that in here. I think I got that blue dialed in pretty good. I, and right here could use probably a little more green. Um, right in here, just a little bit more of that celery green. And I just want to blend it. So I'm starting at the napkin point and grabbing it and pulling it toward the edge just so it looks a little more natural, the line. You guys, and this is just play. This is just get your paintbrush out and play with it. Have fun with it and don't, don't overthink it. Let me add just a little more blue in there because that green was looking a little ruddy to me. Uh, a little more blue, a little white right here. Okay, these round brushes are great for something like this. There. Okay, in here, I need to get some gray and white. I'm going to try to pick up some of that green and rinse out my brush a little. And then let's grab some gray and try to get that neck so that it's not, um, I don't want straight green around there. And I don't know, I wanna do some lace, but I'm not even sure how or in what way, but I do need to get a little bit of gray in here for her neck. Oh, my paintbrush is very wet, but I think it's gonna be okay. And there looks to be some dark shading around the outside of her neck, right? It's, it's really dark. That gray color is really nice. I just need to get some dark gray in here for the edges. And I, maybe I won't even worry about that so much right now. 
Hmm, should I cover up this one leaf a little bit? I think I will, just to make it look more seamless. There we go. Okay, I do need a little black or dark gray. So let me find some of that. And I might hit that with a hairdryer. It's a little too wet for me. And I'm feeling like I could have done a better job right in here with the blending. Let me pick up a little bit of green and just add a little green to these edges here. I feel like the line was really harsh. Okay, now let's see. I, I need to find, I don't quite want black. Let me grab a little bit of dark gray. And I'm going to try, I think I'll use a really, this brush is probably way too big. Um, and I fear that my gray is a little bit too green, but I'm gonna grab a, a little brush, like a little detail brush that's old and it's got kind of some fray to it. And I'm going to just try to edge out the neck. Hi, sweetheart. You're back live! No, I'm not live, I'm recording, honey. So I'm gonna try to come in and just add a little faint of a neckline here like it's showing here. You can see it on the napkin. So I'm gonna add the line in and then try to blend it. My color isn't quite right. My, my gray is a little bit too, has a little bit too much green in it, but it's okay. I'm gonna try to just get the line on there and then let's take that big brush again and do a little bit of blending with the light gray that's already there. It's still a little bit wet. I didn't dry it completely, but let's try to blend this line so it's not so, um, so there isn't such a, you know, delineation between the dark, contrast between the dark and the lighter gray. So I'm pulling some of this gray from the middle to the edges and I'm pulling the edges in the paint so that they blend a little more. You guys, just playing here. There's nothing I can't, I mean, there's no real rhyme or reason here. We're just playing. I have a little bit of dark gray on this brush. Cause see how it's a little bit more shaded in here. I even see a little bit of dark blue, but I'm, I'm just not gonna worry about any of that. There. There, there, there. Okay, now let's dry it. Dry time. Excuse me. Okay, let's cover up these paints. Now I'm thinking about how I could work. I have this gorgeous lace that I just got in the mail actually, um, because you know, most of my shopping is done online. Um, I should have put one of my craft mats down because now I got that little bit of a mess there. It's okay, nothing a magic eraser can't handle later. Let me grab this lace and I have some florals and I don't know if I want to use them or not. So. Now I'm just literally playing to see is there some type of texture that I could add here that would make sense. And I have this gorgeous lace and I was kind of wondering if it wouldn't be pretty somehow. She's so pretty and I think just she's so pretty and she's got all the florals and a little hummingbird around her. Like would it be... I don't know, my, my edging, I was going to kind of frame it in lace, but my edging turned out really good, you guys. I actually, it looks very watercolory. Um, not that I'm patting myself on the back or anything, but I kind of do like the way the edging worked out. I didn't think I'd be able to achieve such a seamless look, um, and it's by no means perfect. I, I do feel like I need to add a little more white in her neck, let me do that while I'm looking at this. And you tell me, I mean, I'm here, this is a video recording, but I'm here in the live in the comments with you. I would love to know, what do you think I should do with the edges? 
would you leave them as it is or would you try to add some texture element here? Now this neck thing, it got too dark on me there. So I just grabbed some of the white and I'm just pouncing it. It's watered down because my brush was in my water. Um, and I'm just pouncing it on top of the gray so it's not so dark and it matches up here. And really to make it a little more seamless, I think I'm gonna try to bring some of the paint into her neck above this green vine so that this color is kind of brought up in to the napkin and, and just, it'll be subtle, but it'll transition better going up, up her neck because it's clearly darker on the bottom from my attempt to match. Okay, that's a little more subtle. Now listen, here's the thing too. Just always remember, um, we look at this really close because I'm pointing it out. I'm pointing it out as I'm painting it. You're seeing the transformation. It's a demonstration to help you like, you know, feel really motivated and inspired to try a similar type of project on your own. Um, but most people who are going to look at this are not going to study these lines as closely as you and I are. Okay, so just don't, just keep that in mind as you're creating that. No one's going to be staring at the neck and, and focusing that much on the paint from down there to up there. They're just not, they're just not. It doesn't happen when you're finished with the project and it's hanging in your living room or on your front door or wherever you decide to put it. Now, the lace thing. <laughs> what did we decide? What did we decide? I think it could be so pretty, but she's looking pretty pretty on her own. I was thinking, I didn't, I, like, I don't want to just strip it on here, you know, a strip of lace. That's not what I, but I was thinking of bunching and making it, like, soft and pretty. I think I'm going to try it. I think I'm going to try it and then decide, do I have a floral small enough and that matches to try to, you know, I think with the lace it's going to be enough, but let's just see. If I took one length of lace at a time so that it's not so hard to work with off of this spool, I'll put the spool aside and I just work with a little bit at a time. And if I can hot glue this or use my, yes, use my matte gel medium to just create this really pretty edging, I think it would be pretty. Let me grab. Um, my matte gel. I don't know. I'm, tr I'm now I'm thinking what is the best glue or adhesive to use? If I use my glue gun, I'm afraid it's going to be too hot. I don't want it to melt anything. Let's put, let's just try it. We're going to put a little bit of glue and I'm going, oh, you know what I could use? My fabric, my fabric tack. Hold on. Hang tight. I, I reorganized everything in here and now um, things are not where they were. <laughs> fabric tack to the rescue. This is exactly for fabric and it will dry clear. So let's use this. Forgot about this one. Okay, so if I stick a bit of this here, I'm gonna hit silicone squeegee to the rescue. I'm gonna bunch it up and I'm gonna push it into there. And I want it, I want it to come off off of the board. I don't want it totally flat. I want it to look like a ruffle kind of, but a controlled ruffle. So I'm going to come a few inches over. I'm going to add some more glue. Just a really thin bit of glue there. And then I'm going to bunch this up. You could twist it if you wanted, but I'm going to bunch it up and I'm going to push it down into the glue. See, so it's gonna give it like a ruffle effect. And I don't want it to be anything perfect or anything. You can twist the fabric if you want. So I'll give it a little twist right here and push this section in. I don't know, I'm just trying to give it some 3D guys. <laughs> and I just think that this lace is gorgeous. I just got it in the mail and I'm like, ooh, what can I use it for? And I think she's so beautiful that this might be a good combination. 
I don't do well enough to like clean as I go right now. So I'm just so excited. <laughs> now I could have one long line of lace, but I thought it was easier to cut it so that I'm working with littler sections. I only, I only wanted the lace because I thought um, it would be a nice frame and it will cover up my um, imperfections of my watercolor, but I'm feeling like I kind of like the way my watercolor turned out. All right, we gotta get some down here and make it try to look seamless right here. I like that it's kind of jumping off the page You could, and when you attempt this, if you decide to try something like this, um, you could do you, like you can do it all in one um, pattern of ripple, or you can do it like I am, and I'm just like willy-nilly twisting it and turning it and gluing it down just so it's 3D and coming off of the panel, the, the canvas. Um, but if you wanted it to be more in a pattern, you could twist it, you could braid it. Heck, you guys, you know, you can do whatever your little heart desires. I just want it to stick up a little bit and be a little bit 3D. And then we could use, oh, a burlap would be so pretty. Burlap and lace, right, <laughs> together is such a pretty addition to, I think, most projects. Like, I would like me some burlap and lace. And you can see, because the lace is so fine, you can push it as flat down into the glue or you can um, make it stick up and be 3D. Like, you have a lot of control here of how much of the lace goes down into the glue and that will give you the 3D effect and you can make it as thin or as high up off the project or as low profile as you want it. Oh, that one's really high right there. I'm gonna stick that down in the middle a little bit. I don't know, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. This is this is um, not like something, I've never done this before, this lace on the edging, um, but I got this lace in the mail and I wanted to play with it and use it. And that combined with the fact that I wasn't sure I'd be able to achieve um, like a really seamless transition in the watercolor between one and the other. So tell me what you think. I'd love to know. I think this is gonna be a perfect size for this last little bit. And then let's see, maybe a burlap flower can be added. Whoop, wrong thing. Because I love burlap and lace together. I really do, actually, I'm a big fan. There isn't a whole lot of lace here, this little tiny panel. I'm gonna try to, I think, twist it a little bit to get it to lift up and just give an interesting view of the lace right here. And then this little tail that's left, I'm just gonna push it down in here, right there. There. What do you think? Voila! All right, I've gotta get this lace. There is a needle, a pin, not a needle, but a pin. I had a pin here for my light there. I don't want to lose it. Put this away. Okay, I actually, I could use that for the hanger for sure if I wanted to. Let me get my glue um, cleaned up and put aside first before I do anything else. I don't want my glue to glue shut on me. Let's get that put away. Oh, and decide, like, is there like just a simple, yes, simple little look at these have like these little pearl pearl things in them like beaded pearls in them oh my lord I don't know I think I like it up top and I kind of like it up here by the bird um that one's too yellow I just I think this really simple one no nope, and I don't like those I don't like the one with the words on it but maybe I've been getting a lot of use out of these. I got these on Amazon. Um, if you want, people usually ask me. You can check out my Amazon store to see if you, you know, if you want to try to find this floral set. They are in my Amazon store in the section called Craft Supplies You'll Love. That's really cute, you guys. There's no more burlap anywhere else, though. So, do I need to anchor 
two spots with burlap. Um, you certainly, I certainly could use a jute rope to hang it because that would also give me a little burlap um, color to it. Let me grab one more thing here and just see. Here. I have some burlap rope that has some um, gold infused in it. And maybe, let's just cut a couple of, or one little length of this and just see if maybe we should do something like that. I love, I call them tendrils. I love using like burlap as like a little um, thing sticking out from my messy ribbons and bows and embellishments. I just think it's interesting and it adds um, that burlap look really easily. Okay. I just, so the colors of these floors, I wish I had white burlap and I don't. My lace is completely white and these are burlappy, um, brown. So that's what I'm struggling with is the color. So I think we could do this and then let's paint a little white dry brushing on here. Um, I'm not decided about that. Both corners are one. You guys tell me. I'm definitely going to do this. You tell me if you think I should do both corners or just one. And I can cut down those little tendrils in a minute. But maybe what I need to do first is take a little bit of my white paint and just paint these florals a little bit. I The color is too brown for me for this project. So I'm going to take a little bit of my white paint on a new brush clean brush and we want to dry brush some white onto because I want it to match the lace. We'll make this flower do what I need it to do which is to match my lace. So you see how that just matches a little better. So I'm just going to brush on some white. Yes that's much better and then let me do the same thing to this. Now this has gold on the edge so I don't want to lose that but I do want it to look more white. Oh, I like how the it's hitting the high parts of this leaf. And so the down parts are brown, but the high pot parts are white. And then let's see about maybe just on the edges. <laughs> Getting paint all over me. We're going to make this work. That's much better. That's much better. That's much better. I like that a lot more. Um, I think even just a tish more white on these make them a little bit more vibrant. I started out slow and then as I go, I'm like, yeah, I like that a lot. So let's just add more white. Started out as a dry brush, but now I'm going to come in and get some bright white coming through here so that I, my goal again, match the white lace. My, the lace that I have is white. I could have painted, we could have painted the lace. Didn't think of that, but now that's what I have. I like it. Um, I like it, I like it. I can cut these little tendrils down, so I know they're kind of whacked out and hanging out really high off here, but that we can contend with in a minute. Let's get some glue. Let's get our little silicone helper here. Push this down into the glue. I do it in layers so that I make sure that I get everything. Now, the leaf will go next. Doesn't matter what it's gonna look like back here because this is all gonna get covered by that pretty little flower. So I'm gonna put the leaf next. Hmm, I wonder if I want that just a little higher. And then this little floral. And we'll put a good amount of glue there to really hold this down. Oh, I just lost a bead. Just lost one little gold bead flew off of there. Oh, that's so pretty. Now these are a little too long for me. Let's cut these down so they're not so high profile there. That's cuteness. Whoops. I have glue like stuck to my fingers, so everything is sticking to me. Oh, I'm so excited. I am trying to rush through it. I shouldn't rush. Now I could make this too a little bit more 3D by folding these up. 
Oh my gosh, it's so cute, you guys. Floral on the bottom or not? I think I'm just going to leave it. I think I'm just going to leave it. What do we think? What do we think? Dollar Tree can 8x8 canvas and a napkin. That's what we started with. And then we used some paints and a little burlap flower, some burlap rope. I hope you guys like it. I hope you like it. And um, I want to say again, thank you. Thank you for being here with me on YouTube. This is new to me. Oh, I thought I had a, a malfunction with the camera. Oh, my lordy lord. Oh, I'm glad that you're still here. Um, this is new to me, and I appreciate you being here. If you guys want to get on my texting alert service, I'm going to put that number in the description of this video. Um, you just have to text the words crafty chicks, um, and then you'll be on my text alert service so that when I go... Um, posting a video or if I'm able to go live here on YouTube when I have a thousand subscribers, I will send you a message to let you know that. Um, so that's the last reminder. Just make sure you hit that subscribe button. That would help out a lot, you guys. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Take care. Bye.